in this in this uh, product update, what I'd like to do is go through the new features that have been introduced for 2023 R1. And let's have a look at this summary uh, slide that is uh, looking at all the, the different areas. This has turned out to be a surprisingly large release. In the end, we have managed to uh, hit a whole host of different things because of changes across uh, the product, the full experience that users and uh, partners will have as they're implementing Sage CRM. One thing that you'll see is that we have implemented a new set of icons, colors, fonts, um, and uh, use of graphics as well within the interface. This has had quite a profound effect on uh, the product in terms of addressing underlying H the way in which underlying HTML is generated, and that's had a consequential effect on, on lots of things like uh, the client side API, for example, as well. Uh, you can see here that it's not just uh, uh, an up update that has affected the the main user interface, but it's also affected the uh, the system administration screens. And you will see here as well that it also encompasses custom entities as well. So there's a new custom entity icon. Uh, we're making sure that all screens that are generated for the wizard, etc., look right and look part of this new refreshed interface. But as I've said, it's more than simply a refreshed interface because we've had to do quite a bit of under the hood thing. Uh, we've got a standard set of uh, images which would allow us to refresh this and provide alter alternatives if we if necessary. One of the things that we've we hope that we've properly addressed is scaling of the interface so that we can now scale up and down, uh, making sure that the uh, image looks right uh, for uh, users who need to magnify the in user interface as part of their accessibility requirements. The use, increased use of IDs within the interface is also going to have a beneficial effect for users who are using screen readers, etc. So it's a much clearer um, interface when it comes to uh, users who need to magnify or they need to use a screen reader, they should be able to see an immediate benefit in this version as well. What we've got uh, as well uh, is uh, an increased ability to to look at this interface and say, well, I don't particularly like that. And we want to be able to swap out and replace it with our own interface. Uh, so we've we've updated and made it easier to be able to override uh, the use of um, the logon screen to be able to make changes as well uh, to uh, the, the the style guide theme. Now you still have the ability to com completely create your own theme and allow the swapping in and out of an alternative theme, but this is where you want to be able to take the existing theme and to be able to override it. And we've extended it into the, the logon experience and the use of icons within that screen for branding purposes uh, for customers. So that ability to override, you can see this is uh, continued here. Uh, on the left is the 2023 R1 brand uh, look, and you can see that I've made some subtle changes uh, in the right hand screen, uh, making use of drop shadows, etc., uh, at different color schemes as well, to be able to provide uh, a, a set of um, updates which might be more suitable for a particular customer. Um, we've provided as well, along with the resources, there are, there's an, there's, you can download and have a look at what we've done with the sample theme overrides. So if you want to uh, use those there, they're linked to on blog articles that are on Sage City. If we continue the sense of uh, what has happened from the user perspective, the big change as far as the user experience is concerned is a feature that we've added in inside uh, CRM, which is our first excursion into the use of deterministic AI to be able to uh, generate a set of summary information. The use of deterministic AI is important because we are not generating plausible information. We're not 
looking at uh, in where you're we're relying on a generative AI to perhaps fill in gaps. We're looking at exact information so you can have a predictable if the same if the data is the same at the beginning, you know what the outcome is going to be. So we've used rules engine to be able to provide a summary which is absolutely trustworthy for our customers. It creates it in near natural language. So we're creating these phrases that uh, provide an easier way to be able to get at information rather than having to look at several different tabs or even where it's on a dashboard, having to turn factual information, uh, uh, digital, you know, the display of numbers into something that is much more easily understood. So we're looking at the idea of cognitive theory to being able to understand how people understand information better. We're telling a story so the information is more memorable and more relatable. It has a consistent structure as well and we've already started work on narrative 2.0 as well to take this still further uh, where we can start to bring in some of the requests that people have made in terms of improving its customizability. Let's have a look at uh, the uh, next element and this is to do with the uh, where we have merged a document and we want to be able to access a document uh, in the library and to be able to change it and then re-upload it. This was a feature that we had lost the ability to do when uh, we had started to remove the active X plugins associated with this uh, library access and, and uh, uh, the editing of documents. We've brought this back now. Uh, we're using a different mechanism to allow for the browsers independent of version to be able to access a document in the library, download it for the user to be able to open that within a tool, whether it is Word or whether it's Excel or whether it's PowerPoint, make changes, save it and then reload back into the library. So we've extended it isn't just say uh, the editing of a Word document now, it's any document within the library can be edited and reloaded back in here. And that could extend to if you're using for planning purposes, something like a Visio diagram or etc. Uh, if you wanted to uh, include that. You can see this is the merge process that we would go through. There's the merge. Uh, let's go and continue that button and then you see that after you've continued the merge you've got the ability to uh, view or edit the file or you can see there you can edit the uh, after you've viewed and edit the file you'll be able to save it again and pass it back up so view and edit the file we have let's assume that we have edited our file so what we're going to do is we're going to find that file again we're going to select it and then re-edit it reload it back into CRM and so it's it's changed, it's it's dropped in there, you choose upload file and continue, and then that's passed back into uh, the the screen. So if it's well could be that you complete the communication and just save that. The same thing happens if you're looking at a live a document within the library. So here you're looking at a slide which contains uh, the which is presenting the the document that is already in the library, perhaps uploaded, where you can find it and again uh, be able to view and edit it and then re upload it once more. The upload of, we've changed the way in which we guard the security of files to prevent malicious files being saved into CRM. You can see that we have now adopted the concept of a whitelist so that you actually have to. Uh, indicate which type of files are allowed to be uploaded and we've got a further check which says allow whether or not you allow executable files to be uploaded as well within this and what this will be doing is that that check will look at the the header of the file to make sure what true type it is so that you've not gone and say uh, taken an exe file and renamed it as a docx file and you can see that this is the type of error that is presented to the user where 
in this particular case, you can see that I've attempted to load uh, a version of the SDK with the exe file and it's being blocked because it's got the wrong, ex it's, it's absolutely blocking ex executable files from upload into the system. The email import feature has been extended inside 2023 um, R1. And if we have a look at this now, you can see that it's now covering the case entities in addition to the opportunity uh, company and person entities. We can see uh, in the context of our case, we can now import our emails. And once a file has been uploaded, you can also start to see in the context of the entity that that has been uploaded as well. So I'm looking here, uh, uh, I can see that I've got a email that has been uploaded into the context of not only the person and Neto tool and Maverick papers, but it's also been uploaded in the context of the case. In this case, the case reference idea is being used as the uh, is the indicator where you've got the case reference ID and then the person and the company in which that case is in context. And because that this is dealing uh, here in the context of custom entities as well, uh, one of the things that you have to be aware of is that this is using the REST API, so that entity has to be enabled for SData or REST access here. So that has to be turned on. Here you can see that we're looking at a custom entity again and just demonstrating that the import emails sits in this uh, this screen. So if you've generated a new entity within the context of, of 2023 R1 and you have selected that it has both uh, communication and a library associated with it, and you have also made sure that it is SData enabled or that it is uh, visible to the REST API, then you will be able to see this button on the newly generated pages. So you'll see an import emails button. In order to see that on entities that have been upgraded from earlier versions, then you will, we've provided some information on how you can add that retrospectively to existing entities uh, that you want to be able to store emails against. That brings us neatly into the overall SDK improvements that we've made for 2023 R1 as well. So if we look on in here, you can see that this is what I'm saying is that if you're running the wizard, make sure that you're also clicking to uh, make sure that it is uh, has SData access. We've got a brand new version of the Advanced Customization Wizard for 2023 R1 that will generate the code for the ASP pages that will ensure on the summary page for that entity, you can actually uh, import emails against it. You can see that that's the case. There's a new icons being used for the project entity, uh, wherever it's being used. You can see that this is the uh, information that I think that um, people who are worried about uh, the upgrades uh, from existing entities and wanting to be able to add this feature into uh, system into systems which are upgraded from earlier versions than 2023 R1. This is the code that is necessary to be dropped into the uh, project, and we've and we've got um, an explanation of that within the help and also inside uh, the blogs as well within Sage City. So there's full information about how to alter the uh, ASP pages that are generated by the wizard to enable old versions to be upgraded into Sage CRM 2023R1 and have that feature available. One of the things that uh, I'm very pleased about is that we've gone back and done quite a bit of work with the SDK, just updating uh, updating the snippet files and making sure that uh, aspects of the SDK work. The .NET API that uh, is really enabled by this to provide lots of code samples and classes, uh, we've used in the, gener in the creation of the uh, narrative summary feature uh, that I was talking about earlier on. You can see everything that uh, I've talked about on the Help Center, so that's all updated on, uh, um, on help.sagecrm.com. Uh, you can see all of the information available for 2023 R1 is available there. 
you can see that the range of documentation that has been changed is quite quite significant. Uh, we, so we've been making uh, changes to the user guide and to the help and to the administration guide and the help. But importantly as well, we've also made changes to the developer guide and onto developer.sage.com. We've updated uh, developer.sage as um, developer.sage.com to bring the .NET API and the SDK firmly into uh, the developer platform. If you are moving through and planning your upgrade, um, we please note that uh, we have got uh, a very strict testing regime, which means that we're only testing from the upgrades from 2020, R1 and 2, 2021, um, R1 and R2 and 2022 R1 and R2. Those are the releases that we've tested the upgrade path for. Um, if you're on an earlier version, then you will need to upgrade to one of those other versions before you can step up to 2023 R1. The hardware recommendations have not really changed. Uh, some big notices is that we have changed now the uh, recommended platform for small, very small implementation. So we have moved to SQL Server 2022 Express. Other than that, um, it's much the same uh, as you would find, as you would have seen in, in 2022 R2 and 2022 R1. You can see here the summary of what we've added and what we've dropped. So we have dropped support now for SQL Server 2017. It won't stop working. It just means you didn't do any testing on that version, uh, and that means we cannot support it. Uh, and we have removed 2019 from the installation package. If you're doing long tail upgrades, this is these are the steps that you would need to go through if you have got um, a long tail upgrade going from 7.1 to either uh, SP1, uh, 7.1 SP1, then on to 7.3 SP3, then on to 2017 R3, and then you can get to 20, and then you can get up to 2023 R1.